ready to get serious about building content sites and building a profitable business online? Welcome to the Niche Website Builders Podcast. We bring you the latest field-tested tips, tricks, and strategies for building a profitable online asset. We interview industry experts, share customer success stories, and reveal our own experiences working on hundreds of sites to inspire and motivate you to make something happen. Let's do this. Welcome to the Niche Website Builders Podcast. Today, we have guest Jackie Chu. Now, Jackie has a huge portfolio of websites ranging from e-commerce, Amazon affiliate, all the way down to Legion. And we cover all of that within this podcast. We go through his background briefly and his current portfolio. We cover his past dropshipping success. Now, he has a great success story of how he's able to exit a big dropshipping uh, business. We run through how affiliate marketers can take advantage of dropshipping and some of the biggest mistakes that he ran into when he was dropshipping um, a few years ago. We also talk about how you can set yourself apart from the market considering dropshipping is relatively saturated with products. So how you can essentially um, get uh, set yourself apart from that market. Also, if you're an affiliate marketer and selling other people's products, how you could potentially go about selling your own white label products to cut out that other company so you can have bigger margins. And that covers more of the Amazon FBA side. We then go into more of his content site um, side, mainly with his Amazon affiliate sites, how he acquires sites, and then things that he does to turn around a Google algorithm update. Um, he likes to buy sites that have been hit with a Google algorithm update, which is quite interesting. We cover things like site speed um, and its impacts on his SEO. We also talk about how he restores um, age domains and methods that he uses that he feels are more effective than just launching a site straight on an age domain. And then we finish on his lead generation site. So he has a lead generation towing website. He mentions how it's like the mafia, um, that industry, and gives some pretty good tips throughout that for those who are looking or are currently doing some kind of lead gen. So enjoy. This episode is brought to you by Niche Website Builders, an agency dedicated to helping people just like you build profitable content sites. Niche Website Builders are the hands-off content site marketing agency you always wished existed. It's run by content site marketers for content site marketers, and they help both investors and individuals alike build profitable online properties. They provide a fully outsourced approach to content creation, link building, and done-for-you website builds, the same approach they use on their own six-figure portfolios. For example, their content packages come with a proprietary keyword research process, are written by in-house native English speakers, formatted using templates proven to convert, and uploaded to WordPress with affiliate links added so that all you need to do is hit the publish button. Check them out at nichewebsite.builders show. That's nichewebsite.builders show and fill out the form to get coupon codes for 10% more content or a 10% discount on links with your first order sent right to your inbox. Welcome to the Niche Website Builders podcast. Today, we have Jackie Chu. How are you? Hey, good. How are you? Not too bad. So if people aren't familiar with you, you're quite active on Twitter. If people haven't seen, if you check him out on Twitter, he's got some great threads and things of his current portfolio, how much he's earning, all sorts of stuff that you've also got some Reddit threads you've posted back in the past with some of your successful journeys, which we're going to dive into through this podcast and the listeners are in for a treat for this one. So why don't you give us just a little brief background about yourself and also maybe, maybe your current portfolio as well, because I know you've got a lot going on. Yeah, sure. Um, so my background is actually in uh, electrical engineering. Um, but yeah, I feel a ton of courses there decide, I think I remember very clearly it was like the night before a failed final exam that I Googled how to make money online, stumbled across uh, black hat world. And since then I've been doing SEO. <laughs> so, uh, shout out to black hat yeah. world. Um, I think we all, but, we all come across black hat world at some point, don't we? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and then graduated eventually yeah. still graduated with an engineering degree um but decided to move into digital marketing got a couple nine to five jobs in digital marketing eventually my last job was like director of marketing at some startup in berlin and then 
decided to start my own agency. And then obviously with agency, you realize why are you doing SEO for clients when you can do it for, for yourself, especially if you're very confident in it. So then we started uh, buying and selling websites. And now we've accumulated like, like 40 plus content wow. sites several e-commerce oh, wow. businesses, um, various, uh, lead gen yeah. sites as well. And yeah, that's our current situation. We do, um, tons of revenue. I think it's like six figures in e-commerce, um, six figures in content sites and low five figures in lead gen. Yeah. Wow. So do you, do you have a whole team that helps you run all this? Then you have quite a large team then since you've got so many different sites? Oh, uh, yeah. I have a director of ops, um, very solid guy, uh, and then tons of writers and a bunch of editors, but, um, and an operator in like the lead gen sites. And then agency side is kind of like tied in with the director of ops. Nice. So yeah. I want to go back just a little bit sure. to your drop shipping success. So mm -hmm. you actually have a, a few Reddit threads that you posted back in the day that you sent me that were actually quite cool. Um, and I guess you could say dropshipping was a big trend maybe a few years ago and it's kind of died off. I guess the whole idea of people saying dropshipping is dead, but I guess you get people saying SEO is dead still. <laughs> it's, a, <laughs> it's a common thing. So with your drop, how did you get it to essentially the success you had within dropshipping? Maybe just give us a general overview of of the things you were doing there, maybe not exactly the products you were selling if you don't want to give that away, but mm -hmm. just a, a general overview and we can dive a little deeper as we get through that. Sure. Um, I actually stumbled across dropshipping from a black hat thread. Um, and <laughs> I remember it very clearly. I was also back in university doing my engineering courses. And then like one of my Facebook ads started popping off. Like we were getting sales. And this is when I was doing it myself. And this is before overload. So I was drop shipping manually. Like I was manually fulfilling orders and like with my credit card out oh in like gosh. middle of class. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I remember I was like, okay, this could be a thing. Cause I remember we, we were selling like, well, we, I, it was just myself. Um, I think I spent like 1k in ads and I got like 15k in revenue in like two days. And I was like, holy shit. Like, sorry, I don't know if I can swear, but like, I was like, holy shit. No, um, hey, go for it. Go for it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was like, holy, holy shit, um, this could be be something. Anyways, um, that site died. Uh, I, I did, had no idea how to run ads. Um, had no idea with like creatives and all that. So that, like, there was ad fatigue. So eventually, people stopped buying. But then, fast forward two years later, my uh, my current business partner he approached me saying, "Hey, uh, let's want to try dropshipping again." And then we did it. We both decided to put in like 5k of our own money and say like, Hey, let's just burn this. And if it works, it works. If it doesn't, then we, you know, we gave it a shot. So, um, we were like, I think we had like one K budget left and then one creative, um, eventually became the winner. And then that's when it turned around and we were able to scale to like, I think it was like 200, 300 K a month in revenue in like uh, yeah a couple months it was insanity but yeah we made a ton of mistakes on the way got burned from by our private equity uh exit as well so uh, a lot of learnings in that business <laughs> do you want to dive into some of those mistakes that you made drop shipping uh yeah yeah i think um number one biggest mistake was we kept drop shipping <laughs> uh we should have probably labeled immediately <laughs> So like, I think, um, if I were, if we were to do it all over again, we would test with drop shipping, like test ads with drop shipping. If you find a winner, you immediately source it, ship it to the U S or wherever your winners are, and then keep it in a warehouse. So people actually like get their products within a week, you know, then, then you can have at least some sort of like return customer kind of situation. Um, that was our biggest mistake that probably cost us like hundreds of thousands of dollars because like competitors entered the space. They did that. What we did do, um, we were just happy with like, uh, taking home like hundred K a month and like, just like settling with that. But 
yeah, yeah. I decided that's what I was the wrong thing to do. So where, whereabouts would you then source those products? Say, for example, you tested it, it's good, and you're looking to source to put into, say, a three, like a third-party logistics warehouse or something, wherever it is. Are you sourcing from the typical Alibaba or you've got other um, essentially sites or places that you look to source? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I, 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 I can speak and read Chinese. So I have like a upper hand here, unfortunately, um, um, for most of my, our, yeah. your listeners. Uh so there's a Chinese version of Alibaba called 1688.com. It's literally Alibaba's Chinese version, and it's only for Chinese people. Oh, wow. And the prices are like 20 to 30% cheaper. Um, I would say like majority of the Western world does not know this. And then, uh, yeah, and then we just essentially store them there and then ship it to a 3PL. And because you know Chinese and everything is cheaper, like by like twenty percent, it's pretty stupid. Wow. Yeah. Um, yeah. We we saw this out opportunity. We actually have a sourcing company. I have like two people ma- managing that. Um, so, yeah, it's pretty good opportunity to just like have a Chinese speaker or just hire someone who speaks Chinese yeah. to source for you. Yeah, it's you save a ton of money. Wow. Uh, yeah, and then you ship it to a 3PL wow. and you fill from there. Uh, most of the wow. most popular ones you find on Google, the 3PLs are fucking expensive. Like wow. they, they absolutely rip you off. So I think uh, be careful with that to your listeners, I guess. Um, just maybe since we're all in SEO, go on the second page of Google after you search 3PLs and then give them some business. <laughs> they'll, they'll, they'll give you a better rate on uh, courier pricing. Yeah. That, that's a very good tip. I might have to get my mum to look at that. So my mum's yeah. Chinese as well. So yeah. <laughs> get, to, yeah, yeah, yeah. get to do some bargaining for me at some point. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's interesting. So, okay. For then, so for then people who don't have someone that speaks and reads Chinese then, that, that pretty much, they have to go through Alibaba or some other equivalent then to be able to source their products. Or is there another way they can go about yeah. it that might be more beneficial for them? So there's three ways you can go through Alibaba and go through a sourcing company, or you can hire someone who speaks Chinese. Honestly, you could probably find like your local uh, exchange student and then just like pay them and then <laughs> probably just That's do really that. Cool. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And you can ask them to negotiate you like a better rate and have them just literally go on, find the product on Alibaba give it to someone who speaks Chinese and say like, Hey, I want to go on one six, eight, eight.com and then find the same product for cheaper and they'll, they'll be able to do it. Yeah. It's stupid easy. Nice. So then how are you finding your products? How are you finding the need? Cause I'm like, since you now there's so much out there. I mean, you go onto Amazon, it's Amazon FBA is pretty much just drop shipping. Right. But Mm -hmm. there's so many products on there. How do you know where your gap is? How do you stand out from the market with your product? Okay, so I think um, one thing to note immediately is the people who say dropshipping are dead, like it's dead. If you take a look at their website, it looks like absolute trash. Like it's disgusting. Like they should be ashamed of themselves. Um, so like number one, get their like website up and like nice. Probably just use like, don't use the standard theme throw on like a paid prestige, it's called like prestige theme. That's like the most popular, nice drop shipping theme that like is perfect for conversions. That, that's a Shopify, Shopify theme. Yeah, that's a Shopify theme. Um, don't do WordPress, whatever you do, it's just easier. Trust me, we've tested this. Um, I know WordPress is better for SEO, all that. Just do Shopify, trust me, it's scal- more scalable. You don't have to worry about anything. Um, and, yeah, it's just uh, once you find probably you can find uh, does product ideas from like those drop shipping tools like Thieve. Um, I think it's like I, I don't know how to spell it specifically. It's a weird spelling, but yeah, just get inspiration from there then find a cheaper version on AliExpress. Then you find the ones with like nice creatives, get it shipped in, you know, shoot your own video with it and then launch ads and launch as many like variations of ads as possible and hope for a winner. But right now it's like very tough on Facebook because with the iOS changes. So 
it's mm. it's tough yeah, out there. I wanted I wanted to yeah. touch on that. Yeah, I wanted to touch on that because I see every now and then through various forums and things people talking about how their Facebook ad prices have just skyrocketed, their um, conversions are down, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, just from this iOS update. Is Facebook ads other than being hard to get to get into? Would you recommend going a different route for your advertising for example youtube ads or google ads or whatever it is yeah so i think um what's working for a duc company right now is uh, google shopping that's what working really well um tiktok ads also but tiktok is hard to create if you don't use tiktok because you'll try to run ads that are like aesthetically pleasing like perfect for instagram for example but people on TikTok don't react well to that. They want more of that, like, you know, ratchet, yeah, uh, UGC yeah. feel. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Um, which, like, because I, I, I'm, I'm, I guess I'm too old for that now. Um, I got my little brother who, who helps us out with it. He's, like, famous on TikTok. He's, like, nice to have. Um, yeah, so probably TikTok ads, honestly. Especially if you're young and you, you use it regularly, you can probably launch on TikTok and do well. Yeah. Have you tried organic TikTok to sell? Just because of the reach, uh, the reach you get on there is bigger? The thing yeah. is, uh, if you know how TikTok works, is um, how they do it is like they they do algos in the beginning, but to go actually viral, um, they have like manual curators. So people actually look at your video and decides oh, wow. if they want to push it or not. Yeah. They still do that. Yeah. They have like tons of curators. Um, and that's how they do it so like no clue yeah if it's too commercial for example if it's like obviously you're the brand and like you're gonna sell this product then this curator is gonna take one look at this and be like nah hell no and probably like push you down but like (laughs) if it's one of those like fun i don't know like those listicle tiktoks you know like uh tiktok made me buy this top 10 like things to buy maybe they'll push you but like even then it's like because if you go on TikTok, it's not that commercial. But I think there there are still ways. There's still ways. Fair enough. So, because of our, our listeners are mainly, I guess you could say, niche site builders, maybe have their own affiliate site, monetize through display ads and affiliate marketing. How would you recommend someone in the affiliate marketing space take advantage of dropshipping? So, from from my thought process at the moment, it's like okay, if I have an affiliate product that's doing well. I would probably look to source it and then essentially cut out the original company and I can sell my own white label product. If they were going to go about that, as you mentioned, WordPress, you're saying WordPress wasn't so good for dropshipping just because it's harder to integrate. Would it be worth, say, someone who's affiliate marketing to set up their own Shopify store that connects to their WordPress to sell their own product and use that traffic? Is that something that you've seen successfully done or done yourself? Mm-hmm. Um. So the, we've tested this, um, numbers aren't great when you push to, for example, Shopify. Um, and it's because people love buying on Amazon. That's the problem here. Mm-hmm. So I actually think there's a massive guy in the industry right now where Amazon like affiliate marketers control all the traffic, but they stop there. So I think what they should do, these successful Amazon affiliate marketers should do is they should launch their own products on like FBA. So they send their private label products to Amazon and then recommend their own. Be careful if you're in the US with the FCC laws, but um, if you're elsewhere, um, just check the local laws for like referring your own products. Maybe you have to have some sort of legal disclaimer um but if we're just strictly talking about capitalism here yeah just do that like recommend your own product um stack up the cash Mm. you know uh because we've tested referring to amazon versus referring to shopify and the numbers are like not even close i think it was like oh well 1.5 percent conversion rate on shopify versus like 30% 30% conversion rate on Amazon, same exact same product. It's like okay, stupid. It's not even worth it. It's yeah. not even like at that point, it's like maybe it was because of the industry, but because our industry was supplements. 
but like Amazon, yeah. like just com- or, yeah, just blew it out of the water. It wasn't even close. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Is there anything that maybe affiliate site owners need to be aware of if they start going down the Amazon FBA route? Is there anything that maybe that's not talked about often? I don't know. Maybe something like um, how the cut the Amazon takes or any anything like that. Yeah. Um, yeah, we have a couple of FBA businesses ourselves. A um, couple of things we notice is one, uh, depends on your product, but like one, cash flow is an absolute niche. Uh, be right now, expensive as hell. You pay everything up front. Um, you're probably like door to door from the moment you place your order is like three months to your Amazon warehouse. Three months oh. means... What, what do you have to order? Like six months worth of inventory up front, which is like insanity for especially like people who are just starting out. So this is, I think what I'm saying here is like, this is only for established um, uh, Amazon affiliate marketers who have like probably flipped a couple of sites and have some cash ready to invest. And they are like, I, I love this niche. We should do this. And yeah, they, they will absolutely kill it if they do it properly. And we're still trying to figure out the, the formula here. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's fair enough. So if you're just starting out, maybe <clears throat> maybe hold off on the, on the drop shipping for now yeah. until you've got a more established income and looking to really build your business and brand. But I wanted to go back into your portfolio as well because you, you don't, well, currently you've, you've sold those drop shipping sites. So you mentioned you're in, you have a, quite a few e-commerce sites as well. And then you also have a bunch of content sites. So I want to dive a little bit into the into the content site since that's more towards our listeners demographic here. Your content sites, are they purely Amazon affiliate? Because I see that you're looking to sell your Amazon mm-hmm. portfolio. So is that mainly just Amazon affiliate monetized that way or do you have other monetization methods within those? Oh, I mean, we have obviously display ads as well on um, a lot of our sites. Um, but the ones I listed are strictly Amazon affiliates because when the custom card that we uh, are trying to sell, it's just better to sell it together. Um, but yeah, we, we have like, display sites as well. We have like v, a ton of VPN sites, which is a huge ticket, have some like web hosting affiliates. Um, yeah, it's like various monetization methods uh, right now. Did you buy those uh, sites or did you start, or how many did you start from scratch versus how many did you buy? uh i can't remember off the top of my head uh it's like a pretty big google <laughs> sheet uh so that um i would say we probably started like 10 plus i, I, oh, I don't yeah. know but we bought a lot of them uh so okay. i guess right if, if i if i could plug anything we're always buying uh amazon affiliate sites any affiliate sites please let me know yeah. show us a message on yeah, twitter or facebook yeah uh, yep. I think this is like, this is the perfect, yeah, yeah, exactly. If your listeners are, um, they're probably niche website builders. So let's, uh, yeah, shoot yeah, them over sure. my way, please. Yeah. Perfect. So I want to dive a little bit into then your website. We'll start with, we'll start with your building websites from scratch. How do you yeah. identify the niches you're going into? And then what's your process with getting started? Let's just take, for example, maybe, um, just your keyword research process and, and kind of what you're looking for um, within that niche? Uh, keyword research, haven't done that in a while. Um, that's delegated probably just from like Ahrefs. Um, what we do from a brand new website perspective, um, I can only speak on the link building side because that's what I'm still primarily oh. like focused on. Go for um, it. That's always yeah, your topic. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, obviously, besides having all your socials up, like Twitter, Facebook pages, hook them up to like, if this and that, all that, you know, like every time you click publish, it'll get published there. Um, Another cheap way to do things are having uh, citations. I think on Fiverr, you can find like 50 citations for five bucks and they, they get indexed. And it's like, I know some, most of them are no follow, but I'm convinced they do something, uh, you know, probably <laughs> diversify your anchors. Um, probably like some guest posts and we primarily build niche edits because I mean, I see you guys are a niche edit provider as well, but 
we do that a lot for clients, so we might as well build it ourselves. Um, so yeah, we just do all, especially when you're starting off, all homepage, all naked anchors um, for like at mm, least six months and then from there. I think uh, a lot of sites I've seen, the anchors are absolutely horrifying and, and they're way too aggressive. And <laughs> they're wondering why it's like- Like best X you know, for X. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and it's just, way too many in like subdirectory pages versus like homepage links yeah. because a natural site like gets mostly home page. To? no no i think it's like mm. uh gut feeling i think it's a yeah gut feeling i think um i think at this point uh back uh link building is like an art almost because you're kind of like uh, constantly testing and then you see how like google reacts to it but yeah, I think um, majority. Of the, I don't. I don't even see like keyword anchor, keyword heavy anchors doing any much anymore, because uh, mm. I think like maybe when we when I first started out, I would like blast exact match anchors and it would do something. But now, if you do the same thing, it it doesn't like really move like it used to. So might as well just build naked. Yeah. So so even to your inner pages as well, you'll build generic generic anchors and even just naked I, anchors I, to your yeah um i actually don't use generic anchors i just find them weird so i just do uh branded mm. so like for example mm -hmm. uh if, even my internet pages we build like indexy uh anchors um yeah. but like yeah primarily branded or naked but inner pages we don't really do naked because that's kind of weird you know you don't really want to see that in no, a blog, in a blog post. <laughs> fair enough. How I, I guess this is more of interest for me too. How when you're doing your outreach, how are you? I guess writing your emails or communicating with the people so you get a high response rate and people want to work with you. Because I mean, obviously, I think we all receive emails from people that we ignore, and we've received some that were like, "Oh, that was actually pretty good." You know, maybe you can take some of that text. So is there any kind of formula or way you like to structure your emails when you're doing your outreach? Uh, well, I haven't taken a look at the emails in a while, but um, I think money talks. Just offer money as, much, as soon as possible. Just say it's paid. Like, Up front. Who's not going to pay nowadays? Are you, are you not going to pay for a link anywhere? I, I don't know. I, I think it's just uh, you just as early on as possible saying, we want to pay you for a link here. And probably just put it in layman's terms and our emails are super short I think like two liners to say like we want to link here please let me know the price and you, the most most uh back and forth are from like negotiations it's not like about response rate for like link yeah because everything is automated nowadays you automate follow-up automate everything i think what we found works the best is like shorter emails and like straight to the point and money talks nice how much are you or how are you determining how much to pay for a link are you basing it off dr or anything like that or traffic or um you just have like we a set amount yeah. that you want to pay yeah we only build links with like sites with traffic so um that's like full stop i think our minimum right now is like 1k plus hrefs organic traffic um or 500 i, I don't know uh but i think we pay very little because we do it at such a huge scale I think we build like, I think I have to check, but I think it was like, we did 6K links last month um, for like oh clients and like our own <laughs> sites. Um, and that's only niche edits. We don't do anything else. Cause like guest posts takes way too long with like back and forth. But um, yeah. yeah, I think uh, uh, we pay based off of like our margins. So I think we pay like around half. We try to pay half of what we sell it for. So I think it was like something like 20, 20 bucks or something like that. 20 to 30. Yeah. Damn, that's, that's damn good. <laughs> yeah. But that, that is damn good. You obviously it's always like money talks. So you say like, if you accept this right now, we will give you like 30 other clients because we have like economies of scale. So we can, we're able to like mm. negotiate. So you have the leverage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. And I want to touch on as well, you mentioned that you also buy websites. I think I just saw you comment on Twitter the other day about um, how you also take age domains and essentially rebuild them and you've had better 
essentially better success doing that. So maybe we'll touch on that one first. I think it was a comment you left on, I can't remember who stood it was on. And you mentioned that mm. with expired or aged domains, you like to rebuild them, let them sit for one or two months, I think it was, before you start using them and you see it, and you saw better success. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, this is um, just something I picked up from another SEO. I can't take um, full credit from this, but um, yeah, I have discussions all the time with different SEOs and uh, this one particular guy told me that um, you should let it sit. And I thought it was a really good idea. Instead of like immediately launching, you just let it sit on its old content with like SSL, let it sit for a while. Because typically when you buy an expired domain, or like an auction domain, you can see it's like downward trend because the site's dead. You just like try to revive that, see where it like, um, what is it? Where, where it steadies or ends up. And then you can use that as a benchmark as well. Then you start building the site. I just think it's just better practice instead of like, I don't know, fully repurposing it. And I think in, maybe in Google's eyes, this might be better in the future as well. Interesting. Interesting. So yeah. how are you, um, or what are you using to essentially measure an aged or expired domain that you want to buy? What, what are the metrics that you're looking at that make it worthwhile for you to buy? Yeah. Um, so it's always number of Hrefs keywords. I don't care about any other mm, metric, Okay. but if it's high keywords on Hrefs, I just buy it because Google likes them. Um, so it could be like a DR2, but like if it has a ton of uh, keywords, I'll, I'll pick that up in a heartbeat. You're the first and person I've, I've, I've heard say that. <laughs> That's interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because I mean, I don't have anything to gain from like, you know, sh sharing. I don't know. For example, I know some uh, expired domain sellers probably will say, hey, the higher the DR, the better. But like, it's just not the case from what I've seen. Mm. Okay, so you're, so you're primarily looking for organic keywords ranking currently, and then <clears throat> you're obviously checking the backlink profile to make sure it's clean and, and all that jazz too, correct? Honestly, the backlink profile doesn't even matter nowadays because it can be dirty as hell, but if it's ranking for a ton of keywords and it's an auction domain, why not? You take those risks. Take it. um, it's like... <laughs> Especially if it's like if the profile is nasty, like the bids are going to be low on auction. It's going to be like a couple hundred bucks. Mm. And like if you go from like domain resellers, those guys charge like upwards to 10K for a domain. Yeah. It's yeah. like, why don't you, you can roll the dice? Why not? Astronomical. Right? Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah. Even seeing like on auction domains, oh my goodness. I think I want to bid at like 10K on a website that I would have paid like. 1k like a year ago or something like that <laughs> yeah, it's, oh it's man stupid. inflation eh? inflation reaches um, age domains as well not just petrol prices <laughs> yeah yeah for sure yeah but hopefully it'll hit uh website valuations as well soon which i think oh, it that's will that's true so no nice. so that, let's cover let's cover then buying buying and selling websites as well because that's obviously something you do regularly and something that you've done and and things you've bought. What are you looking for when you're buying websites? Are you buying large websites that are really well established? Or are you buying the smaller websites that are maybe under monetized, you know, underdone SEO wise? Uh, I think both. We, we buy both. Um, but it really depends on the industry. Um, because we're in <clears throat> um, most of my sites and e commerce businesses are home niche. So I want to stay in there. And it's kind of like my passion. I'm kind of into it. Um, and that's how typically where I buy sites. So like tech and gadgets, I don't buy at all. It doesn't matter how nice it is. It doesn't even matter if it's like the wire cutter. I don't know. I just not, not, not into it. because like, it's annoying because it's not evergreen. What is this? Like the GTX, like, I don't know, like the, I'm like hardware, all that is like updated frequently. So you have to keep like coming up with new content. Whereas like, I don't know, best, curtain rails or whatever is like evergreen people are always going to need that you don't have to change it too much find a good product it's all good yeah but um yeah speaking on like the due diligence side i think uh which speak from the website flip is like doing a way better job at systematically doing due diligence 
I just take one look at it on right into HR yeah. and it's like a gut feeling yes or no. Um, I don't, I, I'll check the backlinks if I'm, if it's like a high ticket site, but like typically if it's under 20 K, I don't, I barely check the backlinks. It's not like, mm. <laughs> if it dies, it dies. I think it, I, it, when you ha when you have a bigger portfolio, it's like you try to like spread your risk, right? Um, yeah. You take you you roll the dice m many times, hoping you hit six every time. Yeah, that's yeah. it. Fair enough. So, so what else are you looking for with the site you're buying? This? So you mentioned you don't really care too much about the backlink profile. Is there anything else that uh, deal breakers for a site that you're going to buy, or is there anything else that is essentially like yes, that's a must a must get essentially? Oh, I absolutely love sites hit with alg algo penalties. It's, um, mm, okay. Your viewers might not like this, but it's a bit predatory, but it, it plays on the psychology <laughs> of the seller because if your site is down bad, you're like, you don't even want to look at it. You don't even want to put your like site into hrefs every day. You like, you have like, I don't know. You just, you just hate, hate the site. Can't even stand the look of it. You probably don't even visit your own website some days. And I, I would come in, I would say, Hey, I'm going to offer you cash up front. I'm not going to do any due diligence. We can move on this right now. Sell me your website. I won't ask any questions. We'll do, we'll, we'll take cash right up front and I'll take a little multiple on that and pick it up for cheap. And we try to, uh, change, like we try to fix it up and it has worked wonders all the time. And there are times, I think like 20% of the time it doesn't work. So we take those L's, it's fine. But like the times when it does turn around, holy cow, you don't, you have no idea. It's like insane. I think we bought a site for like 3K that was down very bad, but at its peak, it was doing like 15K a month, but we managed to get it back up to like 3K a month. And that's like, I mean, that's a dub, you know? yeah yeah damn okay so so what do you what do you identify then in these sites they get hit by algo updates you come in you fix them up and you get their revenue back to whatever level you get it to what are the things that you're doing to essentially make it nice in the eyes of google and to essentially uh revive the website i think uh site speed is a big issue um design i think 99 times out of a hundred is like horrifying the design uh -huh. <laughs> so redesign that uh so side speed redesign like absolutely pound it with like home page branded anchors instead like just fix up like you know the backlink profile you do like the every time i buy it with a, a new site without fail i do like 20 homepage naked anchor or like branded anchor links niche edits uh like 500 citations to the homepage like and a bunch of like i think we have like a foundational link package seller that we go with sometimes and we do that every single time and like sometimes we have to fix anything else and that'll just fix itself is like as wow. much as that yeah, you just do that. Let's sit for a month, revisit it. If it's, if it's reversing, then you're you're golden. But if it isn't, then you start looking at other things. But like those three things, like do it. So what what is it about the design that's so bad with some of these sites? Is it just a plain blog roll, blog roll homepage that that makes the design so crappy, or is it is it something else that you see so often that is a common mistake between so many affiliate sites? Uh... Yeah, I don't, it really depends. Okay, so I've, yeah, it really depends on the type of uh, affiliate site builders. Um, I think a lot that come from, it's it's interesting because like each, uh, I don't, I don't want to like step on anyone's toes, but like each site building service has their own design. Let's just say that. And you can tell where they purchased mm -hmm. it from immediately. Yeah. Just based off of like the page builder they use, the style, 
and it's either generate press or like thrive uh, architect pages and they all look like exactly the same and you yeah. just have to make it nicer and use a better uh, font like i don't i don't was it Arial? <laughs> isn't you don't always have to use Arial, you know and don't even get me started on the ones with sites who use like times new roman like it's just <laughs> There's yeah, there's a, a a lot of different things you can do. Just like get a new logo from Canva. Yeah, it's just like yeah. make it nicer. It's, it's not that hard. It probably takes me ten minutes to fix up a site myself. Or if it's like a larger site, you hire a designer, go on Fiverr, get them to move it like from Figma to WordPress, and you're sorted. Yeah, are you then? Are you staying away from Google Fonts then because of the site speed thing, or are you? That's just too minor for you to worry about. Uh, I, I, I think we still use Google fonts. We just hire like a speed agency or whatever, you know, those like, yeah. Or yeah. What was the, there was like a plugin that like kind of cheats the system. It was like nitro pack or whatever. If you like, mm-hmm. don't want to spend money, just do nitro pack or like something, something similar to that. But I find uh WP rocket with Cloudflare is like, pretty nice already nice and then do, do you have like a go-to thing then that you use for all the stuff that you that you deem as good for site speed do you have like almost like a tech stack that you apply to every site or do you have kind of depending on the site you use different pieces of tech and things yeah it depends on the site what is it site uh, size but um and depends on the page builder so like not all of our sites are using the same page builder we have like tons on Gutenberg, tons on Elementor, tons on Thrive. And yeah, the team hates that, but whatever. I think it's just like, just get it done type <laughs> of thing. Um, but I think Gutenberg is the fastest for sure. Elementor is fast if you use their base theme, like Hello Elementor. So like you could ask like a dev on Fiverr to move from whatever theme they were using to Hello Elementor. And it will speed it up because it's native ish. And then Thrive probably moved to their, was it a Thrive site builder, whatever. It's also their base theme. So, like, keep, what is it? Site uh, page builders with their native theme and it'll speed it things up. Mm. Yeah. A lot of people kind of shied away from page builders since, I guess, since you could say the core, the core web vitals, even potentially before that was site speed. Um, basically stating that page builders are going to kill your SEO. Well, I'm exaggerating, but kill your SEO because it's going to slow down your site drastically. Have you seen any of those effects with your sites with page builders? Do you see, you know, they're worse off than using Gutenberg or something? Uh, Gutenberg for sure is way faster. It's just, that's just how it is. Um, but I've seen, we have sites in like the eighties with Elementor. Um, Thrive probably in the seventies. That's honestly that's fine for me. We, we like we take those. Um, I think it's when you, Does it you see your a lot of bottom line or SEO. Yeah, I, I would say seventy. Seventies is like bottom line. So like we recently redesigned Indexy and we're trying to get that up to seventy. It's been a been a struggle, but um, yeah, we're getting there. We're in the sixties right now, so it's all right. So, like, but most sites yeah, I see you... are in like the twenties. So. Mm. <laughs> yeah, so, so you're well ahead anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Do, do you see do you see any of that having a negative impact on your seo or revenue uh you mean it's a pretty general question i know yeah speed, yeah right? so like for example if you're using using say thrive themes over just like generate press obviously there's a site speed discrepancy and obviously with a lot of people saying hey you should just use gutenberg because it's faster so you're going to rank better for terms versus using a page builder where your site's gonna mm. be slower now, you know, according to Core Web Vitals and whatever else, you might rank low and you're not going to make as much money. Do you see any of that? I mean, it's a pretty hard thing to compare, but maybe with a yeah. with big portfolio, um, you might see some discrepancies. No, I do know like site speed has a huge impact on things. We re- yeah, like one of the recent L's we've taken is like we tried to redesign a site and then the speed tanked. It was like one of those like really nasty websites and we try to like make it beautiful, but then 
it was beautiful <laughs> but like extremely slow so like we messed up there and sites traffic tanked um so to answer your question it works the other way so you got have to be careful there mm. yeah interesting yeah. all right i'm going to change tack just just a little bit i know you also run it's your lead gen business is that in the landscaping or lawn mowing or something like that it's towing it's towing Towing. that's the one yeah sketchy so, industry. Oh, yes i remember that yeah it's absolutely sketchy industry. Sketchy. it's what, like run by the mob i swear to god it's like run by the mob yeah like on the major cities yeah yeah like please don't come after me guys um i'm sorry i will work with you um but yeah <laughs> Like in the major cities, yeah, for sure. Because how like so? they'll how, impound how your car. Work? For example, like the ones who have an impound license um, are probably run by the mob, for example, in like Vegas or like New York. So they'll just like tow your car. And then mm. they're, you're going to be like, what the hell, man? Where's my car? You try to go and then they'll ask for money. And if you don't give them money, they'll just take your car. If you do give them money, you're fine but then if you try to like sue them like the police they're like no one's gonna do anything because like they're the mob like what are you gonna do right so like it's pretty like predatory uh industry that's what i found but um very profitable but yeah it's a sketchy industry <laughs> i never knew yeah. i never knew that yeah. that's next level well actually no i have been my one one time in uh, anaheim i did get towed from a car park so maybe i got towed by a mobster company at some point yeah, <laughs> yeah. but with, with your with your legion let's jump back on topic yeah how are you how are you generating your <laughs> how are you generating your leads for for your tow company and i see that you're absolutely killing it doing it oh not really killing it we're doing like five figures a month it's like low five figures like 10k or something like that it's, oh, yeah. <laughs> that is not killing it and by all means uh but uh yeah we generate leads by ranking for like lead keywords like towing leads towing webs web designs all that um how do you get how do you market towing companies you know like all that like b2b keywords we also run facebook ads targeting people with like towing in their job description and then saying like hey do you guys want like free calls for a month and then that's how we sign them up. And then we charge them money, like a subscription. And it's pretty sick. Mm. Yeah. Are you just doing local to one city or are you going nationwide? No, this site's nationwide. Um, it's like one of the biggest towing. Uh, it's like Yelp for towing, but it's like one of the biggest ones out there. Yeah, I, I absolutely. Mm. Yeah, I got a good deal on this too. Okay, so, so you acquired this one and then kind yeah. of built it from there. Yeah. How much was it making before or when, when you bought it? It was making like, like 400 bucks a month. Oh, wow. So you scaled it big time. Yeah. And the thing was like the rankings were already there. They rank for like towing, towing company near me type of sh shit. And like, mm. they just, the previous owner just didn't know how to scale this up. And yeah, it's, I think it's because like he so was foreign and had an accent when speaking the language so like if you like make calls they're probably thinking you're some sketchy like russian dude yeah yeah <laughs> so then how did, how did you i mean it was already ranking then so how did you optimize that conversion rate essentially was it simply just sending out those facebook ads and trying to get leads in through that free month of of calls or was there something else that you had to do as well Oh yeah, there's like a lot of automation required. So like the Facebook ads is hooked up to, what is it, Zapier or Zap? I don't know how people pronounce it, but like I say yeah. Zapier, Zapier, and then like <laughs> you have like a five email uh, follow up sequence, and then you just push them to a link where they sign up, and sign up for a free month tr trial and go from there. It's like all automated, and if they want to hop on a call, you have your like operator do it and. I think we saw the biggest uplift when we went from like billing on our web WordPress site to uh, SPP.co. I don't know if you guys heard of that. It's like uh, mm, no, I haven't. Service service. It's like I'm sure uh, your users have seen it before. Like all the link sellers use it. We use it. It's SPP.co. Great, um, great, great SaaS company. 
I would invest in them if they would give me some, uh, uh, give me some equity. But uh, yeah, it's a great company. And just by like having some sort of dashboard, your conversion rate went, well, like ours went up by like 50%. It's crazy. Hmm. Just having a dashboard, you know, like who, who would have thought? And this is like a ready-made software already. Yeah, it's pretty sick. So that's something you'd recommend then for most lead gen companies then to have something like that to help increase yeah, the yeah the if you're if you're going national if you're going national if it's just local maybe you could just yeah. have you can use like one dedicated SPP yeah. account for like yeah. all your lead gen sites for example like indexy SPP versus like the towing company yeah gotcha gotcha so then how are you hiring your staff as well because you mentioned you have a call operator is this call operator uh essentially just like a va or is there someone specialized that you need to get on board for this kind of thing now this was really hard to find um because uh the profile of people who own towing companies they're like i feel like tread very carefully but they're kind of racist um and (laughs) so like they absolutely cannot hear a hint of an accent so i had to hire locally either in canada or the u.s so we worked with someone in the U.S. before on a commission-only basis. So we had to give a, a fat commission, and that worked out very well mm-hmm. um, because it was easy sell, to be honest. Because they're signing up for they're they're signing up for a free trial, and all you have to do is hook them up. Like, hey, uh, give me your details. We'll sign you up right now. Or like, but now I have found found someone local in Vancouver. She's great, um, and it was like just a friend of mine, and. It's, it was really hard to find because like you want to convince them on like commission only and they're like, no, okay, I'll give you base plus massive commission plus equity in, in this. So yeah, it took a lot, it took a lot. Wow. So you just give them a piece yeah. of the pie <laughs> and then tell them like, hey, when they're like, for example, how I convinced her was when I signed her up, I was like, hey, um, this site is worth right now 250K. If we can get up to like 700K, I'll give you X percentage of the sale when we sell. And like, mm. let's say, uh, yeah, but like, let's mm. be honest, a lot of nine to five people, this lump sum would be life changing money, you know, people, especially people in an expensive city like Vancouver. Yeah. That's uh, a good way to incentivize your staff. Yeah. Do, you, do you use that kind of incentive for any of your other? staff within maybe your e-commerce or content site um areas yeah yeah actually um my director of ops uh i bought his site 75 percent of it ownership and then i hired him um he's an absolute killer uh so that's a good way to find staff <laughs> I think you buy their, yeah you just buy buy their site and then offer them a job because you like what they're doing right you know like they have a system in place they know how to rank and i love Affiliate marketers. I think they're the brightest of the bunch. Better than uh, in-house and agency, let's say that. Nice. Now, this has been, this has been great, Jackie. That's all the questions I, I have for you for this, but it's yeah. been very, 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 very insightful. Where can people find you where, if they want to learn more about you, if they want to maybe sell their mm-hmm. Amazon affiliate site to you, anything like that, anywhere they can, um, social, website, anything? Yeah. Um, just find me on Twitter, like was it at Indexy? Indexy is a weird spelling. So I hope you guys can plug that in somewhere. And also like, yeah, yeah. we I'll, have I'll a, se- oh yeah, sick. And then there we have a sell your website link where um, sellers, we got like a ton of form uh, fill outs every day. So yeah, if you guys want to send me your site, please do. We, we close within two days. This is probably like an industry, like, speed industry high speed so please uh send me all your deals and <laughs> please stop sending it to uh the website flip thank you <laughs> shout out to mishfeek there then yeah shout uh, out to th- thanks for coming stop on. stop taking my deal <laughs> yeah. yeah thanks a lot <laughs> uh, thanks for coming on really appreciate it hope the list, hope the listeners took something uh out of this they can use for their business and we'll chat soon all right thanks a lot for your time Take easy Thanks for tuning in and I hope you enjoyed the show. Don't forget to like and subscribe wherever you're listening. Until the next episode, goodbye.